In 1848, two young sisters told a neighbour about a spirit causing the sound of knocking and thudding coming from their house in Hydesville, New York. Kate and Margaret Fox would eventually show how the spirit would mimic the sounds of hands clapping. Eventually the spirit started communicating more complex ideas and even saying that his name was Charles B. Rosa, a peddler who had been murdered and hidden in the house years before the family had moved in. Before long, their parents sent them away from the house to live with their older adult siblings to keep them safe. But it was not long before it became apparent that they were communicating with other spirits. They quickly became famous for their original spirit communication and the many that would follow. A greater exposure to worldwide cultures and religions was causing a radical cultural shift. Many began to question the traditional Christian religions and the teachings of the Bible including its ban on speaking with spirits and the dead, mediums and other psychics, as this had become increasingly popular. The fame of the Fox sisters is often marked as the rise of a movement known as spiritualism. With the American Civil War ending in 1865, people were looking for answers about missing loved ones. If bodies had no identification on them, family couldn't be notified, and they would simply be buried. This left loved ones without answers or closures. A greater amount of concern was being placed on the well-being of children, as people were having fewer of them while living in urban environments became more common. This concern about their well-being included their eternal soul, as many were still dying before being baptised. While early spiritualists provided such a connection and confirmation of an afterlife, early communication was slow you had to wait for spirits to tap on a wall or rock a table as you repeated the alphabet. Some managed to channel and write, but for most people this was not an option. One of the earliest answers to this problem was the invention of the planchette, a small wooden device to which a pencil could be attached so messages could be written out by the spirits themselves. It was made popular when an American toy company, Kirby and Company, began to manufacture it. No one knows how exactly the device came into existence. Some claim that it was invented by a French spiritualist who gave it his own name. However, no records exist of any such person. The name also translates to small board. Others claim they were widely used in French monasteries and nunneries, and the Bishop of Paris issued a letter banning its use in 1856. The problem was that the words were often hard to make out since the pencil couldn't be lifted. In 1890, however, the planchette was improved and marketed by a group of men, including one named Charles Kennard. Instead of wheels, they put the planchette on three pegs with felt at the end. This allowed it to glide more smoothly over the polished board they marketed it with. This board had the alphabet written on it in two half circles, as well as the numbers 1 to 10, and the words yes, no and goodbye. They called their creation the Ouija board and marketed it under the Kennard Novelty Company. The story goes that after coming up with the creation, the company contacted a so-called strong medium by the name of Helen Peters to help on deciding the name of the board. She was the sister-in-law of one of the investment partners, Elijah Bond, who was an attorney. When they asked the board what it wanted to be called, it spelt out Ouija. When asked what it meant, the board said good luck. Whether this is true or not is up for debate. Others claim it was a misspelling of the name Oweda, a popular women's rights activist Helen admired and happened to be wearing a locket with her image in it at the time. From there the story says that Elijah Bond and Helen Peters went to file for a patent. The patent officer in charge stated that he would grant the patent if the board could successfully spell out his name, which was supposedly unknown by all involved. The chief patent officer was shocked and amazed when his name was spelt out and granted the patent. However, it never stated how the device worked. Helen Peters would denounce the use of the board despite its popularity. After some family heirlooms came up missing, she gathered with members of the family to ask who had stolen them. The name that the board spelled out caused a deep divide in her family and even she disagreed with what the board said. She would tell people not to use the board, and even on her deathbed insisted that the board tells lies. 
Two years after receiving the patent, Kennard was forced out of his company by his financial backers. This allowed William Fold, commonly known as the father of the Ouija, to take over the company. Along with his brother Isaac, they began mass producing the boards after changing its name to the Ouija Novelty Company. Despite other magic talking boards being available at the time, the Ouija board was by far the most successful. The fact that the marketing kept its origins as mysterious as possible helped, but positioning it as a date night game helped as well. At a time when men and women weren't supposed to be alone or touch each other, a game that insisted it needed two open-minded players of opposite genders and forced them to sit with knees and fingers touching also increased its popularity. In fact, the death of William Fold would only help increase the air of mystery around the board. Fold would build a large factory to manufacture the board, something he insisted the board told him to do. While on the roof of the factory supervising an installation of a flagpole, the iron support he was holding onto gave way. The story goes that he would manage to catch himself on the sill of an open window, which would mysteriously close on his hands, causing him to continue his long drop to the ground. He would initially survive the fall, with plenty of injuries of course, including broken ribs. On the way to the hospital, the carriage he rode in hit a bump, and caused one of the broken ribs to shift and puncture his heart, killing him. The board's popularity continued to grow, being helped by author Pearl Curran, who published several literary works with the help of the Ouija board and a spirit named Patience Worth. The First World War also increased its sales, with people hoping to contact lost loved ones. This later led to it being purchased by the Parker Brothers in 1966. The next year, when American troops were increasing in Vietnam, it outsold Monopoly, the only board game to ever do so. Even after World War II, it was seen as a novelty and party trick, mostly a joke, even being used in an I Love Lucy episode, when Lucy and Ethel try holding a seance. That all changed in 1973, with the release of The Exorcist. The entire premise of the movie is that a 12-year-old girl became possessed by a demon after playing with the Ouija board. Almost overnight, it went from a party game to a portal to hell and Satan, with many religious groups denouncing its use and condemning it as evil. Even paranormal investigators warned against the untrained from using it, stating that it posed too many risks. While today many skeptics see it as nothing more than a board game, many Amazon reviews still warn against using it. Psychologists claim that the board works through a mechanism called the idiomotor effect, or subconscious movements caused by prior expectations. Whether through subconscious movements or the work of spirits from beyond, the Ouija board still remains insanely popular, even today. <laughs>